please guys, do not go freaking typing in people's freaking credentials in a calculator to see if they're on steroids. I don't need you guys in high school like, hey man, how much, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? <laughs> You're on steroids. What is up, it's your boy Johnny Shreve, I BB Pro and miss it. Tell it like it is. Guys, today I'm gonna do a review on gravity transformation fat loss experts, five signs someone is on steroids, science-based. So I actually saw Greg's video on this and I called Greg and I'm like, yo, good video. And then I'm like, man, this is why I'm gonna start actually doing Natty or Not videos, because of videos like this. I've already seen it, and a lot of the stuff in there, I'm just like, what the? The reason why I don't do Natty or Not videos is because it's pure speculation. Like, literally, if I look at somebody, oh, you know what, you got a zit on your shoulder, you're on steroids. Oh, you're a little testy today, that's steroids. Oh, you got way too big of muscles, steroids. Your hair, you're losing it, steroids. It's like all speculations. You can't tell someone's on steroids by just looking at them. You have to literally do like research on the person, if anything. If you're gonna raise any speculations on somebody, you gotta do your due diligence and go back and look at the person's past. I'm talking all the way back. You gotta go back to like, you know, 10 years old. Cause there's pictures of me when I was that age that you can be like, well, okay, maybe he's not. But right now, I'm on. Right now I'm on and all certain signs like, you know, oh, does he have zits? No zits. Does he have hair loss? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he angry? Do I look like an angry person? I might rant a lot, but do I yell? No. But do I look like someone who just gets angry? Ah, takes steroids? Brr. Anyway, so we're going to just review this video, guys, and I thought I'd chime in and give you guys my point of view watching this. All right, here we go. Boom. Whether you're wondering about someone you follow on Instagram, a bodybuilder, or even one of your friends, it's definitely very important to have a good idea of what's possible to achieve naturally if you're planning to go down the natural route. And while most people will instantly assume that steroids are involved as soon as they see some big muscles, a low body fat percentage, and some veins, Unless someone looks like the Hulk, muscle size alone is actually not a very good indicator of steroid use since you can build a whole lot of muscle and get really lean naturally. That is very true. I like how we actually pointed it out that, you know, just someone having muscles isn't a good indicator that someone has steroids. I know this for a fact. I would say more than, I would say more than 30, 40% of people probably in a gym are using some type of of enhancement. Now, it can be steroids, it can be peptides, it can be SARMs. They're using something to, you know, help them get to their goals. You know, it can be clenbuterol, it can be whatever it is. Anything that's not over the counter, there's a lot of people using and they don't look big. That's the biggest thing. So you can't look at muscle and be like, oh, that guy's a steroids. No, you can't. There's a lot of guys who can actually grow muscle, men and women, I coach some unbelievable athletes who are completely natural, and you'd be like, steroids, you'd be like, nothing. Even me, I have to sit and be like, hey man, you uh, you closet juicing? Cause um, you know, if you are, you can tell me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm even sometimes like, yo, I'm impressed. You sure? You know what I'm saying? But, like I said, you, you can't just look at somebody. Anyways, keep going. So I wanna give you guys five signs that could suggest that steroids are actually involved. And it may come as a surprise that the amount of people using steroids is much higher than what most people might think. Very true. A self-reported study found that 4% of 12th grade high school students had used steroids. Another study indicated that a million 84,000 Americans or about 0.5% of the adult population said that they had used steroids at some point. And a study from 1989 indicated that for competitive bodybuilders, 54% of men and 10% of women use steroids on a regular basis. Now, since these were self-reported studies that relied on people telling the truth, and since access to steroids has only become easier over the years, those numbers have most likely gone up. So, yeah, I mean, like, definitely I agree with him that there's a lot more people using than you think. And there are not just bodybuilders, number one. Two, I mean, I, the reason why I like science-based stuff is because we're going to grab studies from like years and years and years ago. Like, do you know how much has changed in the fitness industry, you know, in pharmacology since the last 10 years? There's so much that has changed that when someone science-based goes back to the 1980s to find some of the approval point, 
that's going on now, I'm just like, oh man, like, that's not good enough for me. But for you guys, the impressional, you know, people behind the keyboards watching, trying to learn the stuff, they're like, oh yes, science-based studies. Ah, oh, he's smarter than me because I don't know where to get these studies at. He must be, you know, genius. So, and you believe it, right? So a lot of the stuff I feel is very, it's not bad, it can be misleading, you know, just like, just for, just the same as the bro guys, you know, guys like, you know, bodybuilders who are putting out information that you're listening to him because, oh, he's big, he's been to Olympia, I believe him, or it's science-based, he's got a degree, I believe him, both people know more than me, so they guess they know what they're talking about, which is completely wrong, right, so let's move on. So by far, one of the best indicators of steroid use, other than a blood test, of course, is checking someone's fat-free mass index, or FFMI. If this is new to you, the fat-free mass index measures how much muscle mass someone has in comparison to their height. It's like the body mass index, except instead of looking at the weight to height ratio, we're essentially looking at the muscle to height ratio. Okay, so I'm not, listen, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and blast my boy here, okay? So, you know, good job for you putting this stuff out, but listen, this is some alarming shit to me. You know why? This video got 1.8 million views, 1.8. This guy's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this guy's, more of these guys' videos and see what he's putting out because this is alarming to me. You know, guys like Greg, guys like, you know, Derek are putting out actual good, proper videos, night out videos on how, you know, just, giving legitimate, way better signs as to if someone is natty or not. Now, anybody who sits there and tells me, guys, I can figure something out, just punch this in this, this calculator and you'll find it out. I'm like, immediately, I am discrediting the shit out of you. You will no longer, for me, I don't wanna talk about this conversation anymore because you literally, the first thing you said is, let's punch some numbers in a calculator to figure out if you're on steroids. Like BMI, fat-free mass, all those things are equations that are completely and always off. Right now, I'm obese. I'm obese. I'm obese, BMI, and this, I'm on steroids. So which one am I? Do I, gotta take the, do I take the, the average between the middle? So let me see, if I take my, my BMI, my fat-free mass, so let me see, I'm, I'm obese, on this test, and this test I'm on steroids, if I put them together, does that kind of equal out, you know, my, my lean, my conditioning, and everything else, and makes me not obese anymore, it makes me more on steroids, but not because of, what the, f honestly, guys, like, no, no, <laughs> like, this, no, you cannot tell somebody's on steroids when you take the fat-free mask, no, you can't, sorry, done, period. I've already just x this out, please, guys, do not go freaking typing in people's freaking, credentials in a calculator to see if they're on steroids. I don't need you guys in high school. Like, hey man, how much, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? <laughs> You're on steroids. That's how this shit starts, right? The problem with YouTube, the problem with any of these platforms is no one's holding anybody accountable. There's no one here. You can say, hey, the world is actually an octagon and you can mislead millions of people and they'll be like, the world isn't flat. It's not circle, it's actually an octagon. It's a flat octagon, actually. It's flat, and it's an octagon. You know what I mean? Anyway, no one's holding anybody accountable on YouTube. So you can say whatever the heck you want, and you can mislead anyone you want without any repercussions. Not a good reason. All right, let's go. But luckily, there are online calculators that'll do the math for you, and I'll include a link below in the description for one of those. Once that's calculated, you should know that in a study involving 157 male athletes, 83 of which were steroid users and 74 were natural, researchers found that the highest fat-free mass index that natural athletes were able to achieve was about 25. On top of that, the researchers also estimated that from a sample of 20 Mr. America winners from the pre-steroid era, which was somewhere between 1939 and 1959, they all had an average fat-free mass index of 25.4. So if someone has a fat-free mass index above 25.4, the fact is that they're more jacked than the average Mr. America more winner jacked. from the pre-steroid era, which could indicate some steroid use. However, there are some important things to keep in mind. One is that we now know a lot more about the right way to train and eat due to advancements in science. Such information simply wasn't available during the pre-steroid era. We also have made major advancements in natural muscle building supplements since 1959. And the sample size of non-steroid users in the study. So I'm really glad he went over that. I'm glad that he kind of like, you know, but here's the thing though, what I don't like about it. 
is here's a way to tell someone's on steroids, but you know, since you know recently the studies have actually shown, the other science studies have shown that you can actually put on muscle and discredit the fat-free mass. You know what I'm saying? So why the heck put that in the first place? It's misleading. It's very misleading to tell somebody, hey man, I can find out you're on steroids and putting your numbers in the fat-free mass, and if you're over 25, you're on steroids, but recent studies have actually shown that, you know, due to new researches in, you know, building muscle and supplementation and how much more we can actually achieve, that really doesn't matter. Which one do you want to believe? You know what I mean? Like, why the heck? You guys are already confused as it is. Like, trust me, I understand you guys more than you think because I, I'm a one-on-one -on -one coach. You know, I coach people one-to-one. -one. I get to talk to people and I get to hear what they say. I get to kind of like, you know, talk about my YouTube life and my real life and see all the things that correlate. And the same thing that correlates is the misinformation that people get and think that they can use to get to their goals. So when I get a new athlete and they're saying, hey man, this, that, that, and the other, and I'm just like, wow, you don't know anything. But you've been researching all these YouTube videos, but you're confused because you don't know. The biggest thing I always get is, there's so much out there, I don't know what to look for. And it's like, yeah, how do you sift through the bullshit to find the good shit, right? It's tough. So. I don't like that, but let's keep going. It was only 74 men, which is a relatively small number. So the number 25 is not a set in stone number, instead it's an indicator, which means you can't rely on it with certainty, but if someone has an excessively high fat-free mass index, there's a good chance that they're using steroids. The last thing to keep in mind is just because being above 25 is an indicator of steroid use, it doesn't mean that it Good, and he's touching on that too. Just keep, just to kind of, this isn't the first point, but like really, please do not keep going with that at all. It's not accurate. That's all I gotta say. Let's keep going to the next one. First, we got Cristiano Ronaldo. He's about six foot one or 187 centimeters tall, 191 pounds, which is 84 kilograms. And he's got 7% body fat, which gives him a fat free mass index of 22.39. So this is achievable naturally. Okay, so Cristiano Ronaldo is not achievable naturally at all because he's a one off. Like you got to look at the people who are actually, you know, great athletes, natural athletes who don't like 23 point whatever, a little lower than 25, but you cannot achieve that naturally because you're not him. That is a, that is a high level 99th percentile athlete. That's one of the best soccer players in the entire world. You cannot achieve that naturally. Sorry. Misinformation. Next. He's also about six foot one, 186 centimeters to be exact. He's 205 pounds or about 93 kilograms. And his body fat percentage is at 6%, which gives him a fat free mass index of 25.5. So no, that's wrong too. I'm, I gotta get off this topic, number one. No, he's not 6% body fat. Sorry. Like, first of all, where are we getting the variables? Where are we getting the 6%? Where are we getting the 5%? Where are we getting any of these percentages? We're putting those in a calculator too. So now we're putting a bunch of information in calculators that are inaccurate to find out if someone's on steroids. This is next. Gynecomastia. Research has shown that 37% of steroid users have gynecomastia. For those of you that don't know, gynecomastia is a term used to describe the growth of breast tissue in men and it's almost always caused by elevated estrogen levels. Okay, so gynecomastia being a sign of if you're on steroids. Now, yes, that is a sign if you're on steroids, if you're on steroids. There are other ways of getting gyno. They're not just from steroid use. Like if you're extremely overweight, you know, some people have more gyno than others, right? When it comes to that fat on your butt, fat on your, fat on your tissue. Some people's estrogens naturally can be higher than others. Yes, most of the times you can correlate gynecomestia with steroids, but you can't say all the time that you have gyno, you're on steroids. No, that's only if you're abusing steroids in a sense or the feed even shows up. I don't have gynecomastia at all. I've never had it. I think I had one little flare up, boom, 40 milligrams of Novodex for like a couple, couple weeks, two, three weeks and it was gonzo. I know ways that I can take anything and not show any signs of being on any steroids. I know how to avoid getting gynecomastia. 
I know of different steroids you can take that don't convert into estrogen. Really, there's a bunch. There's a ton of them. Test suspension, zero. Halo, zero. There's a bunch of steroids you can take that will not give you gyno. So if he's got gyno, he's on steroids. And if he doesn't have gyno, then he's not on steroids. That has to be the argument. But that's not true because, again, you can take things that hide the fact that you're on gyno. You can take, you can take you know, different steroids that do convert into estrogen and then take estrogen blockers or take, you know, or take aromatized inhibitors, you know, Arimidex, Romacin, you could take Novadex, Tamoxifen, you know what I mean? You can take a lot of different things to combat having gyno number one or you can take steroids that don't convert into estrogen. So this is another one of the things that it's like you can't look, you can't, you can't just say gyno, you're on steroids, gyno, you're not on steroids. It's just not accurate at all. So no, bad. Still, if someone shows some of the other signs of steroid use along with gyno, it is likely that he uses steroids. So another sign- Wrong. That's another wrong thing. So to try to, you know, strengthen his point and saying, hey, you know, you really can't tell if someone's on steroids just by gyno, but if you take the fat-free mass thing as well too, then put those two together, then, you know, they're on steroids. It's like, no, that's wrong again. Anyway, let's keep going. So another sign is excessively fast muscle gains. Aside from increasing the total amount of muscle someone can build, steroids also increase the speed at which that muscle growth occurs. To put it simply, steroids make you gain more muscle faster. These powerful effects of steroids that cause rapid muscle growth were shown in a 10-week study in which 43 men were divided between four different groups. The first group was not given any steroids and they didn't exercise at all for the duration of the study. So as you might expect, at the end of the 10 weeks, they experienced no real changes in muscle mass. The second group also didn't exercise, but the difference was they were given 600 milligrams of steroids every week and with that, they gained seven pounds of muscle. Then the third group wasn't given any steroids, but did follow a progressive weight training routine, which led them to gaining an average of four pounds of muscle, which definitely isn't bad, but it's about half the muscle growth experienced by the men that simply just took steroids without exercising at all. Finally, the fourth group was given 600 milligrams of steroids each week while also following a progressive weight training routine, which led to 13 pounds of muscle growth. So they gained three times more muscle than the group that lifted weights and exercised just as much, but simply didn't take steroids. Yes, I definitely agree. Steroids 100% can make you gain muscle way faster, for sure. But that cannot be the only or one of the reasons to tell. You know, now I guess if you like, just, you know, all of a sudden, if you're, you know, 150 pounds and all of a sudden in a month you're 200 pounds, yeah, it's like, yeesh, that, might be, but if you're like 150 pounds, you're, you know, 17 years old, 16 years old, your parents are big as F, you haven't hit your, you know, growth spurt yet, and all of a sudden, boom, growth spurts happen, you put on like 10 pounds of muscle, you grow about two inches, you're on steroids now? Anyway, let's keep her going. Keep in mind that many bodybuilders take dosages that are much higher than 600 milligrams per week, yes. and on top of that, they'll combine it with other steroids yes. like Tren. This is why very fast muscle gains can be a sign of steroid use. However, as always, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, some people have better genetics and more of an ability to gain muscle naturally. Second, beginner lifters can gain muscle very fast, even without steroid use. That's because the further away you are from your genetic muscle building potential, the faster you can build muscle. Okay, this might be the most misleading video I've ever watched. It should be five signs you could tell someone's on steroids in five ways that you can tell they're not on steroids or five ways to hide your on steroids or whatever. This is the most misleading thing ever. If I'm a regular viewer that knows nothing about steroids, nothing at all, nothing, I just turned it on, I'm a couch potato and you know, New Year's Eve happened, I'm gonna, I need to get in shape, I need to find out how to get in shape and whatever, I'm gonna turn on YouTube because my friends are watching YouTube, I'm gonna find out how to, how to get some gains. And then I turn on, I turn this on. Oh, what's that? Five signs that someone's on steroids. Science base, it's gotta be real. Okay, yeah, if you put on muscle fast. Okay, cool, I've seen people at the gym before put on a lot of muscle really quick. The guy I worked with at the IT, he was really small, then all of a sudden he came one day really jacked. He's definitely on steroids. Oh, wait a minute, he just said that people can put on new, new fresh gains from being, you know, just starting working out for the first time. How, what? This is the most confusing shit I've ever seen.
What do you believe? How do you sift through what is right and what is wrong? What is optimal? What's not optimal? What is, I, wh I don't get it. Listen, there is no, there is no doubt that steroids have side of, can create side effects and those side effects can be male part, uh, male pattern baldness, acne, you know, right? When it comes to women, you know, hair growth, you know, male traits. There's yes, yes, for sure. I'm not saying steroids don't do that. But I'm not, but I'm, what I'm saying is, is that you can't go by that alone to tell someone on steroids. These five signs alone, if you were like five signs and checked off on one person, you can be completely wrong, completely wrong. Those alone don't, you can't just check, 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 check steroids. No, it doesn't work. Sorry. Does not work. Here we go. Let's keep it up. The last sign that I want to go over today is again, one of the more common ones that you've most likely heard of roid rage or in general, aggressive behavior. People joke about this all the time, but significantly boosting your testosterone. Roid rage is not a real thing. Roid rage is a myth. If you were someone who is angry already, if you take steroids, you're still angry. What causes roid rage, okay, is the inability to manage your own self, your own impulses. That is something completely on a different topic in turn when it comes to anger, period. Anger, roid rage? No, that's just anger, it's being mindful of how you work. We are all stimulated by our environment. What makes the biggest difference is that person being aware in the moment of how they are when they're stimulated. So when they do react or respond, they have control over that. So when it comes to roid rage, it's bull. Roid rage is bull. Rage is real. Anger is real. And until you are conscious of those things that trigger those emotions and being able to be able to see those before you respond physically, you're just gonna be basically randomly impulse and angry and showing rage. Makes sense? Five signs on how to see if someone's on steroids basically is a load of crap. You cannot tell someone's on steroids by just looking at them or doing studies or tests that group people together, you can't. The only way you can tell someone's on steroids is if they literally say, hey man, I'm on steroids. Everything else in that is speculation. Now there's obviously those people out there who are obviously on steroids like your boy Isaiah Miranda who literally just effed up and like, hey guys, I'm on steroids, but here's suppressed test in the tip. You know what I'm saying? There's that kind of stuff, but other than that guys, it's just speculation. It's just speculation. Anyway guys, I hope you liked the video and if you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the video guys. I'm always gonna put out, tell it like it is truth. And guys, for coaching, johnnyshoop.com. Guys, come get in the best shape of your life for the rest of your life. And make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at underscore Johnny Shreve underscore. If you guys want 20% off at IamMutant.com, make sure you use my code Johnny20 for 20% off at IamMutant.com. Anyway, guys, until next time, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.